presentation a little bit of talk that um, you say EID you see EID um, invited me to talk about um, some of the aspects of game development it's it's um, and super it's it's super fun to have um, um, a lot of you here um, all right so one thing I want to mention I want to give a huge shout out to uh, modern public school because um that's my school from where i graduated from uh, i studied from nursery class to 12th class and uh, i invited some of the students to join in uh, in this webinar to have some fun and to learn about this new interesting field that is almost about going to be 200 billion dollars worth um by the end of 2023 and um, i have some really cool things to share with you all all right, so let's move ahead with the presentation. My name is Ishan. Um, I am the founder and the CEO of a startup firm, which is called the Indie Corp. It started in 2016. Um, we are a web and app development firm, and we help small businesses, startups, etc., to build their software platform, help their product get on the right track in terms of um, software aspects. All right, so I am a game development mentor at International Organization of Software Developers. I am a game developer by passion. Um, I create, I am creating titles for um, platforms like PC, Android, iOS, PlayStation. Um, uh, I am working on Xbox One, Xbox Scarlet, so next generation platforms. I'm working on that as well. Um, I am a Microsoft Loan Student Ambassador. I am a fellow at a company called Incubate N, and I am a tech speaker. So I talk about tech just like I am going to talk about a little bit of gaming technology in this um, video. Wow, I am really excited for this one. Alright, so let's talk about what is game development before we jump onto the question why game development. So game development is an art or you can call it a, a sort of like um, a, a framework or a um, sort of way of creating games, right? So why do we need to create games? First of all, they are a good source of entertainment and they usually count in the game uh, sort of entertainment industry. So if you're gaming, you're entertaining yourself. Um, that's one part. So why to choose this particular field in tech? Like, why not go for app development? Why not go for Android apps, iOS, Windows, Mac? Well, you can make huge amount of money there. But the things the, that you will experience in the game development field are um, cannot be found in any other. So, so there are unlimited opportunities. Gaming is one of the biggest entertainment source in the world. Um, I would argue that it is the biggest and not one of the biggest. Um, it's like on the number one because every kid that I know has PUBG, Fortnite or even Call of Duty installed on their mobile devices. So coming from a generation that 
had um, uh, Game Boys and uh, Nintendo DS to play Mario, uh, Super Mario, etc. Hooking up to our TV too. Being able to uh, game on our phone has really taken a huge leap. So this is why you want to be in this field because it is continuously evolving and um, you can learn a lot about other fields by being here. The gaming industry is going to be worth 90 billion US dollars in the year 2020. And uh, when we reach the end of 2023, it is speculated that it is going to be worth 200 um, billion. So that's a lot of zeros. Um, there is a continuous demand for fresh ideas. So when you go for uh, sort of like a, a software development job, there are very huge standards that you need to follow, which haven't been um, changed or haven't been innovated in a lot of years. Um, such trends can be seen in government jobs, etc. But when you go for a game development job, when you're designing a game idea, fresh ideas are always put first. So, um, that is one of the biggest thing that really intrigues me about this field that makes me want to you know um, learn more about it because every idea is a fresh one um, there is a creative freedom to create literally anything so we have games where we simulate war uh, in call of duty battlefield and we have um, um, various casual games like candy crush and both of these genres uh, genres give same amount of fun to different groups of people so we can cater to different needs and we can take the freedom to create anything um, we haven't reached andromeda galaxy in real but there is a game called mass effect andromeda which take you, takes you to that level how did we did that we bridged the gap uh, between imagination and reality and created a game so that's how we do it um, contribution in other industries as well. Science and research, really important. Ga there are many various techniques that evolved from game development and then got adopted by science and research. So if you want to do a simulation, sort of like see how a volcano will erupt, you will use a game engine or a 3D software to do that. Um, films, education. so using augmented reality and virtual reality is really shaping our education industry right now and um, by by promoting virtual education game development is going to be at the forefront of it and there are more to it all right so i want to talk about the film industry for a while um, remember that beautiful um, game that we uh, sort of beautiful movie that we experienced um, in IMAX and movie theaters a while back ago when we could go outside um, it was called Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War so I'm going to talk about both of those films um, the main villain in those films that is Thanos the whole character was motion captured on one of the biggest game development software that I use and um, the industry has for a couple of years now it's called Unreal Engine and Unreal Engine was used to capture the motion capture data of Thanos. It was used to do a lot of visual effects like explosions and Iron Man's armor in Unreal Engine 4. So you can literally tune into Netflix and see real life work that basically um, grew out of game development. All right, so let's talk about what platforms are available. Now we have decided that we want to go for game development. Let's talk about um, platforms that are available what what um, where where do i launch that app or game right so you can launch your game or you can put your game on microsoft xbox platform it is one of my favorite it is the best platform after um, personal computers i believe um, because microsoft pushes a lot of independent developers so if you're like a student a school student a college student uh, a grad student if you're creating something they will be the first to grab um, your product and help you grow um, they have various programs that i'm going to talk about in the later part of the presentation but microsoft is a good community uh, has good tech communities and being part of one i can tell you from my experience that people at microsoft do care about students and that's um, one of the best parts about it so we have sony playstations um, Sony PlayStation also have some independent titles that you can 
um, ask them to publish. Um, probably have to pay for it, but that is an option if you want uh, to play your game on Sony Playstations. Um, there is Windows. Right? So, um, Windows is basically the common platform where all the gaming happens. So, games like Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, Call of Duty, Battlefield, um, Unreal Tournament, PUBG. These were all launched on PCs originally. Halo. And then, then uh, they made into like um, consoles, etc. Um, Android and iOS. How can we forget the mobile gaming uh, platforms? So, you can even put your game on Nintendo Switch. Some softwares let you do that, so that's pretty cool. But let's talk about Android and iOS for a while. So, PUBG and Call of Duty and Fortnite has been one of the biggest um, deals for a while. And uh, if you want to make something like that, that catches attention uh, of the mobile users because it's such a huge market. Not everybody has a laptop or a good laptop or like a gaming PC like I have one right now. Um, uh, so, maybe just target... Um, Android devices or iOS devices, right? So you can make game for mobile users and um, I'm assuming 25 of the people who are watching right now um, are going to be aiming for uh, mobile devices and then focusing on bigger platforms because those are the deal right now. Okay, now we have decided um, why do we want to give uh, develop games then we decided what platforms to choose what are the available options um, right so we have Microsoft Xbox we have Sony PlayStation we have Windows Android iOS Nintendo Switch um, we have Linux uh, Ubuntu etc so all of these things we know what platforms are available for us now let's talk about okay I want to make a game but how do I know that my game will be good so there are five pillars in my um, belief that makes a game great and I have noted down these five points um, from my five years of experience that began in 2015 in 10th class. Um, so first of all your art or concept is really important. Right? So um, the concept of your game what are you trying to create here do you want to simulate war like call of duty does do you want to create a space adventure are you getting your things right are you using imagination if so is it inspired is it directly copied um, if it is then probably try to change it a bit um, is the concept even um, viable so for example i want to make a game about beavers so beavers what beavers do as um, animals they build bridges um, sort of like architecture of food um, using their teeth and their claws over small water bodies would that be fun though i don't think so maybe you can make it interesting you you add a little particle effects you add a little visual effects to make it look interesting that's what comes in your art or concept your character designs your game designs um your scoring systems what do you why do you want me to play your game that's what comes in art or concepts. Then comes gameplay. Gameplay is basically um, the experience when you play a game. So if I'm playing um, Call of Duty, then I have a very specific type of gameplay. I can um, view the world around me in first person perspective. And um, I can um, sort of shoot gun shoot through guns i can throw grenades i can kill my enemy if i am playing a horror game i have a very specific motive to survive not being caught there are jump scares um, sort of like um, spooky things creepy music that's what comes in um, sort of like gameplay like what are you experiencing while you're playing the game not while the cinematics or like the movies play out or even the menu the gameplay is when you actually are in a level and you're trying to play something right um so let's talk about sounds and cinematics so sounds and cinematics are kind of an important thing but not necessary sound is cinematic is not for example you're creating a game like candy crush or mini golf sound is important the sound of the stroke that you when you move your golf club and hit the ball that is important the background music 
if you're creating a Candy Crush, might add some funky music to it so that um, people of all ages could get interested. Um, if you're making a game for a more mature audience, um, get yourself a little soundtrack that is more mature, that is not at all, you know, um, too much colorful. If you're cre- creating a horror game, then um, maybe try to add something spooky. Sound brings life to your gameplay, right? So let's talk about cinematics. Um, so cinematics, I would love to give you an example of um, how you can use cinematics to um, sort of view environment around you. So I'm going to open YouTube. I'm going to open my own channel. I'm going to make yourself um, uh, view something. It's Let's talk about the Spider-Man movie. Right? So this isn't technically... Um, this isn't technically game development, but this is what you'll experience. I can build a game around that, and um, let's try to figure out what's happening. Right, so I have zoomed it for you. All right, so I'm trying to showcase the New York City where Spider-Man actually lives, and I'm trying to paint a picture like there is a lot of traffic, there are street artists that you can usually find in uh, in a busy city like New York. There is graffiti art, there are people exercising in park at all times. Um, and you go up and you see a billboard showcasing a news about Spider-Man. Uh, and if I unmute myself, uh, in, unmute the video, I ask my friend to do an impression of Dave Jenner Jameson. Uh, and then sort of building up to a moment where you see, where you meet Spider-Man. Right, so this is Spider-Man, he's talking to his girlfriend right now, and then he'll start um, doing all the parkour stuff, reaching at um, some point. Right, so this is what um, game development is about in, in um, aspects of cinematics. So you have an idea, and you have gameplay ready, and you have added sounds, but Cinematic sorts of um, improve your experience as a whole, helps you build a better story. All right, let's um, move forward with the presentation. All right, don't want to take too much time on one thing. Let's talk about visuals. In the video that you just saw, Spider Man was going through, um, we were first of all going through um, the sort of like the city. Like, so you saw some visuals, you had the title came up and then um, we had like a billboard. So we were seeing like the news play out in that billboard. So that's kind of things are called visuals, your um, visual effects. So when you shoot a gun, there is like a spark that comes out of um, the gun when you shoot it. It's called a muzzle flash. Are you getting it right? Because if you're not, um, you probably need to work on it harder. A lot of people care about visuals. Visuals are what makes your game interesting. Um, if the if I am not appealed by the game or the art that you're making visually, I might switch some uh, to something else. All right. So I'm going to take a break from it and I'm going to um, give a little message to all of you. If you're new to this channel, make sure to hit like on this live stream and subscribe to the channel. Um, UACID are great people and they do. Um, webinars like these every week or like so and um, they make some great content check out their videos um, after this webinar they're really good all right let's talk about the story so i have explained why story is really important um, basically it paints the picture so if you're making a game like again fortnite you don't probably need a story because all people land on one island in like pubg all people land on one island and they fight till one man survives you don't need a story to that but what they did was they tried to build it. Um, so when you see a trailer for PUBG, you can actually feel, um, you know, being part of something more than just the game. Um, also, if you see uh, sort of like a game like Candy Crush, it doesn't have a story. It doesn't need to. Your aim is to just match candies and get rewards and score points um, more than other players. So that's what that kind of game gives. So try to build a good story around your game. That's probably will um, get more people hooked on you. 
For example, I'm watching a movie called Shutter Island. It stars Leonardo DiCaprio. It has a good concept. I have read, I'm so, uh, seen the trailer. The art is good. I have um, seen the trailer. I have, I'm listening to the music track. It's good. Sounds checks out. Um, they are using good cinematography. Cinematics checks out. They are good. They are using um, nice filters. They are not doing uh, over the over the top visual effects, right? Um, they are having a good story. So all of these things that make a good movie is probably what makes a game great too, because um, movies are a big inspiration for games. So try to build a story. Watch much many movies. Watch documentaries, watch action movies, watch horror movies. Um, if you have something like a uh, um, sort of like anxiety issue, or if you're feeling something, try to bring that on paper. Try to build a game around it. And that is what I'm going to talk about next: is gaming as a form of art. All right. So, how many of you like to paint, like to draw? Um, you like art in general, and and it doesn't matter if you cannot draw well. Um, I guess everybody is an artist in their own aspect uh, aspect of life. So if you like um, drawing, if you like watching other people's art, if you like making videos, any form of art, dancing, music, anything, um, just comment yes. I love art, and um, I'm going to give you a lot of reasons why you should see gaming as a form of art. Um, so. Gaming, I, I I have sort of um, always felt myself closer to always related myself to game video game characters than to real life. Um, sort of um, seeing The Last of Us, The Last of Us 2, Far Cry, um, and the whole series Call of Duty that sort of gave me a better gave me a better experience than movies throughout my childhood. I I'm uh, a kid. I was a kid who was born with, um, uh, you know, people playing video games, and um, I used to go um, to my nanny's house, uh, to my grandmother's house, and I used to play video games on an arcade that she had kept. Um, that old one that used to take like uh, coins. Um, so I I loved games, and I saw that as a form of art. So I would I would draw um, characters for my um, for a game that I used to like, so there was a game called Legends, and there was a samurai who was hopping on trees trying to save a princess. And I would draw um, that character on paper, trying to see if I could do something better. Try to give the tree a little bit different shape. Maybe add a different opponent. Try to make that. Um, uh, I used to. Uh, so when I started creating games back in 2015, I, I started laying down um, drawings of how I want my game to look. That might not transcend into the final product, but it was an important um, part of the whole project. <clears throat> okay, so it's amazing. So many people love art. Um, so when you see a game, so when you saw the Spider-Man uh, movie, there was something about it that screamed art. There was direction, there was um, videography, there was cinematography, even virtual. A video production is a video production, right? So you can create a whole 3D movie using just the game engine. You can create a 3D um, scene using Unreal Engine. So recently I went on LinkedIn and I posted some, posted some good, uh, like sort of, um, um, what do you call a uh, scenery of um, God rays shining through a tropical forest falling on the floor of a temple and there was a statue of cat. I'd, I'd love to see you. Uh, I'd love to um, show you the whole project after this webinar is over if someone likes to see that. So that's an art. Like um, painting on a canvas is two dimensional. It's restricted. But when you create something in a game engine or if you're creating a game, it's all 3D. Most of the time, um, so it sort of um, gives you a better perspective, I guess. And it's really important to view gaming as a form of art. So what you are seeing as a background is actually an art for the game that was created um, years ago and is still being created. Like sequels are here. It's called um, 
Legend of Zelda. So I guess this is Zelda right here, and this was one of the concept arts. So you can create concept arts. They are literally paying hundreds of thousands of dollars each year on concept artists who make concepts, um, who like paint the picture. Okay, um, the character would look like this. So before jumping on the computers, there are a lot of artists focusing on that, and then the 3D artists take over and try to create the 2D world into the 3D. Or again in 2D, so that's um, super interesting to me. Alright, I want to talk about some case studies. Like, what good games do I need to play or do I need to study before you know going into the whole field? <clears throat> Let's talk about one of my favorite games, Player Unknown's Battleground. And my God, this game is good. Um, a lot of parents hate on this, but that's another topic. But Game development is a really, really um, amazing topic, and why PUBG is important is because a new perspective that it brought to the table back in 2015. Yes, it's almost five years old at this point, and um, not a lot of people know that. Um, so there was this guy called Brendan Green, and he used to do moddings of, he used to create mods for other games. So mod is like a modified version. So I create a game and I allow developers, other you know players, like okay, if you don't like the way the game is right now, you can change the way things look. And he used to do that to other games, um, which allowed, right? So he created a small um, mod that was called H1Z1, and it was like 25 people land on a uh, come on an island and the last man standing wins. It got a lot of popularity, not a lot like. Um, in that particular game, it was famous. So like thousands of people were playing, and there is this company called Blue Hole uh, Productions in South Korea, and they invited Brendan Green. They wanted like, okay, we saw your game. It's super amazing. Um, we love the concept. We want something. You can help us make. Please be our creative director. He was. He wasn't making a ton of money from H1Z1. And then he directly got a job of a creative director. That's basically CTO, Chief Technical Officer, for a gaming company. And the game was Player Unknown's Battleground. They modified um, the whole idea into a uh, hundred people landing on one island with different maps, and the last man standing will win. Lots of guns, lots of fun. Um, and that's how you know what makes a great game: the concept. Um, Fortnite. People think PUBG copied Fortnite. Fortnite was a story-based game until 2016. So what happened was PUBG released, and PC gamers were like, "Okay, this is the thing to do right now." And it was still in early um, stages for two years. So like under, until 2018, the production version, like the actual release version, that everybody can play without any bugs or without any major bugs. Um, can be played out on a PC. Wasn't released, and um, Fortnite was like, okay, this idea is cool. Let's try to implement that in our own way. So Fortnite is a cartoony game, and what they came up with was a, a really cool um, idea as well. So props to both of the companies, both of the creative directors, the developers who worked on that. So what these case studies tell us, they tell us that something fresh is always welcome. People have seen shooting games. People have seen third-person games like GTA V. How would you change um, the concept of an open-world game? So GTA was a popular deal, and Ubisoft came with an idea to create a game where the person is hacker. So the concept is same, the art is same, but what changed was the gameplay, the story. So always take inspiration from what's out there and try to innovate that. Um, as your first projects, and maybe down the line you will get a new idea, right? And not having a new idea is not a problem. You can just see what inspires you, what movie you like, what game you like, and try to create a better version of um, that by yourself. Awesome. I want to talk about Alone. Alone is. Um, the game that probably not a lot of people will be familiar in this um, live stream right now. So it's the title that is launching in um, hopefully in November 2020. 
um december christmas by by most like at at most um so alone is a psycho thriller and horror game it is being made by me and it is going to be launched on xbox platform so i wanted to bring attention to this project because this brings something really new what brings what it brings is anxiety and that's probably not a good thing to like good thing to say out loud but the game represents my um, some of my thoughts on horror movies and um psycho thriller movies that i have seen throughout the years um and i have sort of created my own idea of a thriller experience so one person gets trapped in an asylum with zombies and all he has for help is himself and a broken um assault rifle so this is something that i came up with it has been selected for a program by xbox called id at xbox and this is going to be releasing for xbox platform for pc i'll try to make a mobile version of that and um and uh, this is what i wanted to tell you so the contrast in these two titles is so different major production independent student game developer um multiplayer single player not so story driven completely driven by story and lots on lots of cinematics um so i am excited i i was um going to i am going to show some gameplay footage so that's a little bit of that was a little bit of surprise for everyone who joined all right so let's talk about the skills that you require the biggest circle says creative aptitude so um creative aptitude is solving a problem using your creativity solving creative um problems like if you have a mathematical problem and there are five solutions for it try to find that would take me less time or if someone is not being able to understand that particular problem and the four solutions that you gave try to find the fifth one that would make the other one understand the question right so creative aptitude is like sort of focused on your right side of the brain so right hemisphere of the brain takes care of all the creative thing um so in my um perspective everybody is born creative everybody has a good idea of what they consider as art some people would say okay i like watch dogs i like watch dogs too um i like assassin's creed ubisoft make good games good open world games give them a better story give them lots of missions um medieval period is good so if they like that kind of things um that's art in their perspective if someone says okay modern history is not so good and um the art that um bengalis did and and like the modern the like the poems of indranath tagore wrote or anything else that's art the portraits that was um made by um you know uh, made by um priests in various temples or or churches some might consider them uh, as art All right so game um uh, game development requires that creative aptitude what you consider as art is heavily going to um influence what game you are creating so if you're creating a game for kids and you consider medieval um history as art like things about that as art then you might want to change things or you might want to create things in a way that might that kids might find a bit um sort of like you know attractive so that's what creative aptitude is then is problem solving problem solving aptitude is the best thing that a human being can have other than empathy so problem solving is basically an app, uh, attitude to solve problems whether or not you know the uh, whether or not you know a particular skill you learn that over time and you eventually solve that through your own wit um you take help problem solving aptitude doesn't mean you have to do things by yourself if you're a game developer there are chances that you will be working alone but the internet is your team take help from that use solutions already found by other people and try to find the best out of that right 
so you don't have to create new from scratch every time that's what i'm trying to say so problem solving aptitude is must let's talk about programming so programming is important not so important i'm going to explain um, in the later part of the video so programming gives you a little bit of logical side to what things are going to do in the back end so you're saying okay so when i touch this it's going to spark and fire is going to come out of this um, box right so you're going to code in like when the um, hand touches this the fire effect will um, show up and something like that blah 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 and that is what programming is this skill can be easily taught to anyone in my opinion i have been working as a game development mentor and never have i um faced where someone would not get programming so people would find difficult to understand a concept but eventually they understand it in, if uh, by trying various ways so that's what i'm trying to say and also i help them along the way that's part of my job is. that's what my job is okay let's talk about what tools are available for game development um the first is unreal engine it is an open source tool so people who are not familiar what with what open source is open source is the code is available to you so if you want to change how the software works you can do that by um changing the source code um unreal engine 4 is the most advanced most powerful software there is for any 3d application that you want to do um i have told you the industrial applications movies are being edited on unreal engine 4 characters like thanos are being um, created in unreal engine so that's awesome let's talk about unity unity is um a very good software it's on par with unreal engine 4 not quite but is almost it's almost there um it's easy for beginners so if you're new to learning code if you're new to all the 3d things Unity might appeal you because it's simple. It has the um, simplistic and minimalistic user interface. Um, Godot game engine. Godot is not very popular, but I believe it is worth giving a shot because it's really good. Um, it's also open source, so might want to check that. And the best. um 3d creation tool in my opinion after unreal engine 4 is blender so blender is also open source so a lot of these tools are free all you need to do is hit download on their website and download that watch a lot of videos and start creating it's all free and they don't charge a lot of money um if you're a student don't worry um they're not going to charge you for anything so blender is also 3d creation tool it's really amazing it's um It's a little bit complex than the rest of the tool set here, but that's going to give you a good um, experience for creating 3D stuff. All right. Um. So opportunities in game development. Why do I want to go into game development? Where are those 200 billion dollars coming from? Well, first of all. if you put your game on play store for a price of money people are buying it and you're getting um a paycheck at the end of every month like okay there's many people buy what your game so that's how you can earn your money you can earn your money through ads but let's talk about the bigger um sort of like opportunities like the mega ones um pun intended um epic mega grants that you can see right here is um basically um an effort by epic games the company that owns unreal engine 4 they say that um show us your work like um let me just show you how it actually looks like so just type in epic games mega um grant so you can get a grant of about $25000 um to create your 3d software So let me just show you. So make amazing things. What are Epic Grants? Epic Games has committed hundred million dollars to support game developers, enterprise professionals, media, and entertainment creators. Students um, should be bold. 
um, educators and tool developers doing amazing things with Unreal Engine or enhancing open source capabilities for the 3D graphics community. So if you're creating something on Unreal Engine 4 that is going to that uh, is going to sort of that sort of has the potential to create an impact on the society, on the tech community, on literally anyone, make sure to apply for this. So what kind of fundings do they have? They have funding for game developers. So you're creating a creative game that is new and um, amazing. Let's check that out. Um, media and entertainment, sure. So like you can create a movie. Um, enterprise, creating an enterprise level software. Okay, awesome. Education, try to create a tool where um, it would help students to learn a few things. Go ahead. And open source developers, so people contributing to Unreal Engine 4 and other 3D softwares which are open source and helping others to grow will can avail this grant. And you can fill this basic form and um, it's very simple, it's very, um, it's not asking for a lot of um, information from you and that is pretty much it. So you can request for a top of the line AMD Ryzen 7 3800X hardware. Um, that's amazing. You can get a Magic Leap hardware. Um, that's amazing for virtual and augmented reality um, aspects. Awesome. Okay. Alright, so let's go back to the presentation. Oops. Okay, so there seems to be a technical problem with um, my stream. So let's um, let's take questions now. So that was the end of my presentation. Anyway, um, you can view my LinkedIn profile. Um, my username is Ishanbora2. Um, you can check out my Instagram. You can find it uh, find it in the description, etc. So. Shoot me with your doubts, shoot me with your questions, I'm going to solve, um, help, you, help you clear your doubts so you can learn Unreal Engine 4 where you can um, build these skills and be a good game developer that can contribute um, in the community. So I am um, waiting for your questions. Alright, so you can go to my channel, um, just type in Ishan Bora and um, Probably the first channel would be um, mine. So go ahead, see that trailer. I cannot show it because school children are here and that's 18 plus kind of thing. Or like 16 plus. Okay, can you explain the hardware a little more? So what kind of aspects are you looking for me to explain on hardware? Can you share from where you learn game development? So I took an online course on Udemy. It wasn't that great, so I dropped it. I watched a lot of tutorials um, on YouTube. There is a guy called Dev Squad Learning, and um, or like Virtuous Learning Hub. They have good tutorials. I did a whole game development series. Go to my channel to find that out with Dev Script. It has got like 5,000 people have already seen that. Go ahead, um, watch that series. I am um, creating. Uh, a lot of good content on game development. You can check that or uh, the channels I am mentioning, you can check those. Yes, Unreal Engine can be used for games on all devices. Yes, almost all devices. Macs, I am not sure if you want to do that, like Apple, Mac, computer devices. Um, but iOS, sure. How did you start developing games? It's a good story actually. So, 
um, I was looking for like 3D softwares to work on. I checked Blender. It was too hard. I checked Unity too hard. So I came across this software called 3D Rad in my 10th class. And I created this little um, game that is called uh, three sort of like Racing Fever. And let me just show you to you how funny it actually looked like. Um, so I'm going to mute the music for no copyright um, issues. All right, so you can see how it actually looked. The, it's like running at 15 frames per second or like five frames per second. And um, this is the game that I came up with um, in 3D Rad. This is like a racing game. And I was able to showcase this game in school and uh, a few of my friends. I told you five things are important for game development. Good art or concept. Um, good story. Um, good visual effects etc etc so these five things are important right, that i mentioned earlier difference between blender and unreal unreal is a multi-purpose software blender is more generic type so if you open blender it's all is going you can see is a 3d scene whereas in unreal engine you select a specific type of okay you're creating a uh, movie okay this is what you want to work on okay you're creating a game this is what you work on you're working on an architecture thing this is what you work on so Unreal is different in that aspect. Um, Unity is best for beginners. I would disagree with that. I was a beginner. I didn't like Unity at all. Unreal Engine is the way to go. Plus, it has a visual scripting method called Blueprint. So you don't even learn, need to learn code to get started on Unreal Engine code. Um, thank you, um, Ria. Um, Cannot share my mobile number. Please ask me all your questions um, that you have. Yes, I made this game from scratch. So I had to download all the models. So these are some pre-built models. Some of the resources were actually in the 3D RAD software. Okay, so my PC is, it looks something like this, like the purple shining box. Um, so that is what I'm using right now and uh, it has a Ryzen 5 2600, 8 gigs of, uh, 16 gigs of RAM and GTX 1060, 6 gigabyte version. It's um, not the top of the line, but it gets things done really quickly. Okay, so, but um, for creating my original games, like back in 2016, I was using a i3. To will go processor. Um, thank you uh, for um, Captain Brawl. The foremost important thing is your art or concept. That is off the top of my head. That is the most important thing that you want to work on. Okay, there are general royalty issues. What you can do is learn Blender, try to make your own models, or go to websites like Megascan. They have three models, um, architectural models. So architecture ka problem clear ho jayega aapka haan se. Um, They have good, actually real looking models that you can use in games. Um, and go to sketchfab.com. There are a lot of good things, royalty free um, there. Okay. Um, I have learned coding from YouTube. Um, courses from Udemy, um, school was a good inspiration, Deepthi ma'am helped me a lot. So Deepthi ma'am is the name of my CSC joint school. So you make the models fair. In Blender, Blender is the software that I usually use for creating models. I learned game development through YouTube, I'm not going to answer that. Go to YouTube, search game development, and watch videos. Um, the only thing to, uh, the only barrier um, that you want to cross for achieving anything in this world is getting started. Start by watching videos if you want to start for game development. Type in game development, go to my channel, see some content, get inspired if it is that worthy, if it is worthy, and. Um, yeah, that is pretty much it. Are there any limitations? 
um limitations in what sense um it gives you creative freedom so there are no limitations in that aspect there are no monetary um uh, sort of like um how can i explain there are not no uh, not much monetary drawbacks that you can have from this industry all right so they are filling um, the team has um sort of like um filled out uh, they have sent a form link and any one person who fills that form is going to experience my mentorship first hand right so thank you um the python inventor um uh, really cool nickname a uh, username you got there it was supposed to be basic because um this is about how you can develop a career in game development so you can go from gamer to game developer and that's what the topic was um go check out the link and the uh, chats right now fill out the form any more questions that you have i am super i'm going to be super happy to answer them um or if you like i can show you the gameplay so i can do that too all right what game is my favorite to play these days my favorite is watch dogs 2 i am finding it really interesting um a lot of things that i learned from it that i'm going to apply it in my own project um so yeah a good project a good game is from there i can learn um new things where i can see right so i'd be happy to answer more questions or if the audience wants i can showcase my own project that um is going to launch on um xbox platform and pc um i stream sometimes i i do a little bit of gaming streams and twitch on twitch um but usually i create content um video content on youtube i have a small podcast minecraft is um sort of a fun game it gives you the sense of that you can create a lot of good things and you can create good contractions good machines um and the good thing about minecraft is the freedom it gives you to interact with the environment that's why people like to play it um okay so the best and the hardest game that i think um years went by to create that should be um god of war the new, the new one and um yeah that would be my answer that took a lot of effort there are thousands of people working on that all right people are saying that they want to uh, see the gameplay i hope it's visible so this is um it i am going to use my controller here right let's load the game i am going to decrease the um desktop volume a bit okay all right let's um go So I hope you can hear the voice of the uh, zombies. So I picked up a battery. I um took some ammo. I want to go that side, but I need a key, right? 
So let's find a key. Yeah, please don't spam the live chat channel. Um, one comment would be fine. So if the stamina runs out, um, keep pressing shift won't help. So you can reload the weapon. Um, so these are the zombies. Okay, let's not go near them. Open. Okay. So a little bit of spooky environment, creepy music going on. That's the sort of the vibe that I was going for. So what happens if I shoot I have an enemy, right? They will come after me. So you can see the lady is now coming after me. And I can shoot her. Um, and that is pretty much what I can show you right now. Um, it's a work in progress. And it's going to take a while to complete this whole project and get it launched. Alright, that was pretty much it. Thank you for joining me. It was amazing to showcase my own project and talk about game development in general. I am looking forward um, to your um, I'm looking forward to your feedbacks in the comments. I'm looking forward towards the form entries for mentorship program that um, uh, the community guys are having. Thank you for joining. Thank you um, all the people who joined. It's really amazing um, to talk about the thing that intrigues me the most. And, and I'd be happy to do um, something like this another time. Maybe um, do a little bit of tutorial live stream on how to create a game in just one hour. That'd be super cool, right? So yeah. Uh, let us know what you think about the webinar in the comments and um, I'll catch you guys later. Bye bye.